Okay, this voice recording is going to help you walk through the uh, handouts that your teacher gave you um, on DNA technology stuff. So the first one here is looking at a comparison of restriction enzyme analysis through gel electrophoresis. So what they're showing you in this image is that the original fragment is 10 kilobase pairs or 10,000 uh, base pairs and the fragment of DNA has been cut by restriction enzymes. Uh, so the restriction enzyme is ECO-R1. So we have three different samples, all the same original size, uh, but obviously have some sort of rift flip type of deal in it where it's being cut in different scenarios or cut in different locations. So sample A uh, has three cuts in it. And your idea, the idea or what AP would like you to do is be able to translate how uh, it's cut to how it would migrate through a gel. So if we're going to uh, walk through this, if this is piece one, and this is piece two, and this is piece three, because Eco R1 cut this piece into three segments, you'd have a larger piece, a smaller piece, and a smaller piece. So doing the smaller pieces first would probably be easiest. So we're going to bring those all the way down near the base here. And since they're pretty equitable in size, sorry, this thing's not exactly calibrated the best right now. see something like that and then the big piece would be up higher for a uh, B we only have two pieces a small and a larger one and that larger one has to be larger than piece three from the segment above so we'll do that segment now we'll put that up here and then the smaller piece needs to be down where the last one was and then section three has been cut in one location as well where we get one big piece and one smaller piece or medium sized piece so we might see something like um, this for scenario. Uh, remember that it doesn't put them in the order one, two, three. It puts them in the order of size of the fragment. So even though three is third in the segment, it actually comes out to be uh, the top one here, right? So this would actually be segment three up there. Uh, this would be what segment two, I guess, and this would be segment one. Um, so that would be how that DNA would actually move through that gel. Uh, in the second problem, we give you a plasmid uh, that has been cut by three diff or, I'm sorry, two different um, restriction enzymes. One is B or BAM high, uh, and then the other is Eco R1. And so what we're seeing is uh, multiple cuts. But you're going to have to translate to, I guess, four different scenarios here. Uh, the total base pair is 10 kilobyte or kilobytes, kilo base pairs. And so the very top of your calibrated gel would be 10. And the smallest one is 1. So way down here would be 1. And we have to show if we cut this sample with Eco R1 with BAM and then Eco R1 and BAM and then if we uncut it. So uncut's probably the easiest one to do. If we didn't cut it, it would still be 10 kilobase pairs big. So that fragment would be up here. Uh, if it was just BAM cutting it, there's only one cut for BAM. So that would elite, just turn the circle into one large fragment that lays out. So it would still be 10. Like I said, this is not calibrated, so I apologize. And then Eco R1 cuts in four locations. So the first scenario here, this piece, right, would be 5.5. .5. So 5.5, .5, what, here's, here's 5, I guess. So 5.5 .5 would be, I'm going to use a different color here. 5.5 .5 might be a little bit higher. Uh, and then we've got a piece that's, 1.5 we got a piece it's two and we got a piece it's one so one would be way down low maybe two and 1.5 1.5 might be here two might be here right and that's how that cut would look oh i just put answer i'm sorry when i put bam i didn't mean to put that there bam should be up here and then bam plus eco r1 uh, we're going to have all the fragments then so we have a three 2.5, a 1, a 2, and a 
So we're going to have to lay out how all those fragments would look. So the biggest one is three. So three would be maybe down here. Then we have a 2.5, which would be right underneath it. And then we have a 1.5, right? So that'd be, oh, I'm sorry, and a two. And then a 1.5. And then a one, right? So similar bands, but uh, slightly different because of the cuts. And the big thing is this is easier to do. What we're going to expect you to do on the free response is something more along this line where we give you the gel electrophoresis and you have to make the plasmid map and explain how you made that plasmid map. So in this scenario, we have Eco R1 cuts the plasmid that is uh, clearly 100 kilobase pairs big. And how did I figure that out? The uncut is saying that it's 100 kilobase pairs big. So our circle is 100 units all the way around circumference. Uh, and Eco R1 cuts and makes a 75 and a 25. So in order to make two pieces, Eco R1 would have to cut a circle in two locations. Um, HIN 3 also does the same thing. It makes two pieces, so it must cut twice. And then Eco R1 plus HIN makes four pieces, which makes sense because Eco R1 makes two cuts and HIN 3 makes two cuts. That would make four cuts total or four pieces total. So let's walk through how you would come up with an answer for this. So usually what I do is I take two circles and I kind of draw them out first. This thing is not calibrated and starting to kind of agitate me. Um, so this would be 100 kilobase pairs big, and this one's 100 kilobase pairs. Wow. Base pairs. This thing's annoying. All right. So with the... Uh, Eco R1, we get a 75 and 25 cut, so maybe that would show something like this. So this piece would be 25, this piece would be 75, and then HIN 3 is more um, closer to equal in the middle. So you'd have 45 and 55. So then we got to think about how they're going to overlap these two circles in order to make the fragments that we see on the gel. And so the fragments on the gel say... 10, 15, 30, and 45. So we kind of have to think about how that's going to lay out for the actual restriction map. So the 25, 75, if we lay that out, we actually have to show the letters for that cut as well. So we're going to, I'm going to try in separate colors here. So here's E, right? And here's E. And this is going to make a 25 piece and a 75 piece. Right? And then we have uh, HIND 3 that is going to cut a 45 and 25. But remember, when the two of them combine together, you get a 10 and a 15 and a 45 and a 30. So how can this lay out? Well, if HIND 3 actually cuts here in between and cuts one location outside, right? so that if this is HIND, the math all has to add up, right? So if we're talking about between HIND uh, and E, or E cola, or uh, E cola R1, that might be 10, and then H to E would be 15. So that equals 25 total that between E and E is, right? And then from E to the H, then, we would have 45, and that would allow 30 to be on this side here. And I know it's not... Um, scaled properly but mathematically it works out and it shows uh, the proper cutting sequence so your plasmid restriction site would show hind inside one cut inside the two eco uh, r1 sites leaving a 10 and a 15 fragment if both segments were cut or uh, if both restriction enzymes are applied to the plasmid so this is as hard as it's going to get and the reasoning behind how you come up with an answer with this uh, would be more along the lines of guess and check, right? You kind of have to take the circles, right? If we were able to take this circle and kind of rotate this circle. I'm not going to do it properly because this thing is really starting to... All right, forget it. So you get, if you could draw these out and just mentally think about how they rotate over the top of each other, that's how you end up coming up with the answer, so... Uh, if you have questions with any of these things, uh, please 
feel free to ask, but this is as hard as it's going to get uh, for the DNA tech type of stuff.